This presentation is about effluent quality requirements for wastewater treatment plants, and we need to know what these are before we start to design a plant. Effluent quality requirements, or standards, are set by the local environmental regulatory agency, set up by legislation for this purpose, and the aim is to protect inland surface waters, groundwaters and coastal waters from any adverse effects of treated wastewater discharges. Usually standards are set for BOD, suspended solids, ammonia and possibly E. coli, but this list is not exhaustive. The regulatory agency has a duty to set sensible standards, but unfortunately not all do so. This is important because unnecessarily stringent standards require a more expensive wastewater treatment plant, and this may be unaffordable, or depending upon the operational complexity involved, too complicated to be operated successfully. As a general point, design engineers should always discuss inappropriate standards with the regulator. Standards are legally enforceable, so they apply only in one jurisdiction, usually a single country, or a grouping of countries such as the European Union. Guidelines, on the other hand, are basically recommendations for good practice, and they're made by national or international agencies, but they're not enforceable by law. The UK Royal Commission on Sewage Disposal, which sat from 1898 to 1915, produced one of the earliest sets of effluent standards to protect UK rivers. It classified river water quality on the basis of a new test that it introduced, the five-day BOD of the river water. Very clean rivers had a BOD of no more than one milligram per litre, clean was a BOD of two milligrams per litre, and so on, as shown on the slide. The commissioners then set about determining the maximum permissible BOD of a treated wastewater that was to be discharged into a river. To do this, they considered a mass balance of BOD. Basically, this says that just downstream of the point of discharge, what goes in must come out. What goes in is the BOD in grams per day, due to A, the river water upstream, and B, the wastewater effluent. And this has to equal what goes out, the BOD, again in grams per day, of the downstream river water effluent mixture. So the BOD mass balance equation is QRLR plus QELE equals QR plus QE times LM, where Q is the flow in cubic metres per day, and L is the BOD in milligrams per litre, which is the same as grams per cubic metre. And the subscripts R, E and M refer to the river, the effluent, and the river effluent mixture. To solve this equation, the commissioners had to make some assumptions, such as an available dilution of 8, that is to say the river flow is 8 times the effluent flow, that the upstream river was clean, that's to say its BOD is 2 milligrams per litre, and that to avoid nuisance, the downstream river water has a BOD of 4 milligrams per litre. Putting all these values into the BOD mass balance equation enabled the commissioners to determine that the maximum BOD of the treated wastewater was 20 milligrams per litre. To this BOD standard, they added a maximum suspended solids requirement of 30 milligrams per litre. This became known as the 2030 standard, often, but erroneously, termed the Royal Commission standard. Actually, the 2030 standard wasn't the only one recommended by the Royal Commission. In fact, the Commissioners recommended a range of standards, depending on the dilution available. They applied their 2030 standard to dilutions in the range 8 to 150. For dilutions less than 8, the precise values for BOD and suspended solids were to be set based on the local situation. And for dilutions greater than 150, they recommended only standards for suspended solids. And when the dilution was greater than 500, no standards were deemed necessary and the wastewater only required screening and grit removal. A good example of dilution much greater than 500 is at the city of Manaus, the capital of Amazonas state in Brazil. The city had a population of about 1.4 million in 2000 and all its wastewater is discharged without treatment, just coarse screening, into the Rio Negro, which joins the Amazon River just downstream of the city. The Rio Negro has a dry season flow of about 30,000 cubic metres per second, so the dilution is vastly greater than 500, and no treatment is necessary. Other examples of BOD standards include no more than 30 milligrams per litre in India, and no more than 25 milligrams per litre in the European Union. But for waste stabilisation pond effluents in the EU, this is no more than 25 milligrams filtered BOD per litre, i.e. excluding the BOD due to the algae in pond effluents. 
Generally, BOD standards are now set for just carbonaceous BOD, sometimes called nitrification-inhibited BOD, as a chemical is added to the BOD dilution water to stop the growth, and hence the oxygen demand, of nitrifying bacteria. Good examples of standards for coastal discharge are in the Aruba Protocol of the Cartagena Convention, which is basically a treaty signed by all states in and around the Caribbean. The Aruba Protocol seeks to reduce marine pollution from land-based activities, which basically means wastewater discharges to the sea. For discharges into Class I waters, which I'll define in a moment, the BOD and suspended solids both have to be no more than 30 mg per litre, and the faecal coliform count in the surf zone, just off beaches, has to be less than 200 per 100 mil. For discharge into Class II waters, the only requirements are that the BOD and suspended solids both have to be no more than 150 mg per litre. Class I waters are sensitive waters, of the type shown on the slide, and Class II waters are all other waters, which are essentially not affected by wastewater discharges. Discharges from long sea outfalls are almost always into Class II waters. The requirements of the Aruba Protocol are basically very sensible. Strict quality requirements are applied when the discharge is into sensitive Class I waters, but quite relaxed requirements when the discharge is into Class II waters. Another example applying to coastal waters is for shellfish growing waters. In the European Union, the E. coli count in such waters should be no more than 10 per 100 mil. Governments and regulators often want BATNIC for wastewater treatment. BATNIC is the best available technology, not entailing excessive cost. This is fine from their perspective, but what the plant owner and operator wants is CATNAP, the cheapest available technology, narrowly avoiding prosecution. CATNAP started off as a joke, but it has its serious side. After all, why have an expensive plant that produces an effluent of about 3 mg per litre when the regulator only specifies 20 mg per litre? A cheaper one that produces 18 or 19 mg per litre would be perfectly OK. Unfortunately, there are too many examples of unnecessarily expensive treatment technologies being sold to the unwary.